Hello students, so you've chosen a topic, you've done your brainstorming, you have developed a thesis statement, you have your subtopics, and you've got a fully developed outline. Now it's finally time to actually start writing the paper. So let's start at the beginning and talk about introductions. You know from previous lessons in this series that you want to start with some kind of hook or opener and then provide some background information on your topic and finish it off with your thesis statement. Another way to think about your intro is as a kind of inverted triangle, meaning that you're going to start a little bit more broad, more general, and get more specific as you go. In some ways, the thesis statement is the most specific sentence of your introduction because it's really getting to the heart of the matter and defining for your reader what your specific argument is going to be for that whole paper. Now, although we're starting more broad, you want to be careful to not go too general and start off with something like, since the beginning of human history, students do that kind of opener a lot. And no matter what topic you're writing about, the beginning of human history is probably too much. So don't go overboard. Yes, start more general, but general within the range of your specific topic. I've mentioned in the past that hooks are a bit dangerous because they can come off as kind of cheesy. So let's delve into what makes for a good hook versus a bad hook. Let's look at some examples. Let's start by looking at some not so great examples of hooks. Oftentimes we hear that opening with a question is something that might draw your reader's attention, but questions do tend to sound a little bit too cutesy, a little too informal. Let's look at some examples of what not to do. Did you know that many people who were in prison for years have later been found to be innocent? Whatever happened to taking the time to actually read books? Why do people accept the status quo when it comes to healthcare? In all of these examples, it's fairly clear where the writer is going to be going with the paper and where an argument might arise about either the prison system or the lack of readership or the problems with healthcare. But making these into questions makes it sound too informal, kind of like you're just having a, a chat with your reader. So you want to avoid that. Something else that people often try to do is to start with personal anecdotes to make it feel more sort of immediate to your reader. Let's look at those examples. When I first learned about people on death row who were later proven innocent, I was shocked. My parents and grandparents understood the pleasure of getting lost in a book once in a while because they did not grow up with a smartphone in hand at all times. When my aunt was diagnosed with cancer, she found herself having to fight with her insurance company over coverage. Again, just like the questions, we can tell here what the topic is, and it could grab the interest of your reader, but when you put yourself in it or someone in your family or like a personal experience, that makes it too informal. When it makes it sound too personal, then your reader is less likely to find you credible because you might be too emotional about your topic. Now let's look at some better strategies for hooks. One thing you can do is try to open with a startling statistic on your topic. For example, it is not unusual for innocent people to be convicted in the U.S., but innocent African Americans are seven times more likely to be convicted than innocent white Americans. The percentage of 12th graders who read a book or a magazine every day declined from 60% in the late 1970s to 16% by 2016. As of 2018, 27.5 million Americans did not have any health insurance coverage. Okay, so in all of these cases, you have facts. You have some kind of number that could potentially be surprising or shocking to your reader that will make the reader want to continue reading your argument. But it is something that is simply factual. It's not personal and it's not emotional. Let's take a look at another strategy. You don't necessarily need a statistic. You might just have an interesting fact that you want to share about your topic. By the time that new DNA evidence exonerated him, Malcolm Alexander had already spent 38 years in prison for a rape conviction. In 2004, the National Endowment for the Arts published a report entitled Reading at Risk, 
with concerning findings about the decline of reading in the U.S., and since then, readership has declined even further. When compared to other developed countries, Americans spend the most on health care with less to show for it. Once again, these are all facts that might capture the attention of your reader without sounding in any way personal, and that's what you want to go for in a good hook. These are not the only strategies for a good hook, but they give you a good idea of what to aim for. That said, this is just the first sentence of the intro, so let's take a look at the rest, background info, and thesis statement all together. Let's say that I'm writing a paper in which my argument is that the U.S. government should implement certain measures to help combat the growing rates of childhood obesity. So if that's my main thesis in mind, how do I build up to that? So let's take a look at our hook, at our background info, and then finally at our thesis statement. The World Health Organization has determined that childhood obesity is one of the most serious public health challenges of the 21st century. So I've started this with an interesting fact that allows my reader to understand the scope of the problem. Now I start with some background info. American children have been especially impacted by this worldwide trend, with one out of every five children and adolescents classifying as obese. So I've got some statistics here, and I'm also starting to get a bit more specific because my first sentence was about the problem of obesity all over the world. Now I'm narrowing down a little bit to talk about within the U.S. Let's continue with some background info. Americans increasingly rely on processed foods and live more sedentary lifestyles, and as a result, children have suffered the consequences. With childhood obesity rates in the U.S. at an all-time high, it is time for the federal government to exercise its considerable powers and resources in defense of the national welfare. So in my background info, I've set up the problem with multiple facts, and now I'm starting to head further towards my thesis by introducing the idea of the federal government needing to do something about it. Let's continue. Of course, controversy always arises when there is talk of government intervention, but the problem is now too big to be handled on just a local level. I'm starting to anticipate the pushback that I might get from some readers who would disagree with me, and that helps again to guide me towards my thesis. And now we get to the main sentence. If the U.S. is to become serious about combating this epidemic, the national government should implement bold measures such as taxing unhealthy food items, enforcing stricter regulations on fast food chains, improving the quality of public school foods, and mandating nutrition education in the schools. So I've clearly stated my argument, and I've provided a roadmap for my reader of exactly where my paper is going. If you think of your intro kind of like a formula and you're just plugging in hook, background information, thesis statement, then it's pretty straightforward. And as we know, sometimes getting started is really the hardest part. So just get that intro in and you're good to go.